Hello and welcome back, and that is right, it's CES 2024 this week, and we're going to talk about SSDs a lot, and this is the turn of this drive right here. This is a drive I've wanted to talk about for six months, but I'll be straight with you, I've spent about six months wondering how to describe this drive, because straight away, the name is odd. This is the Maximum, or Max 14 Gen 5 SSD. And right now, it is one of a small collection of Gen 5 drives that are able to walk around with the bold claim of being 14 gigabytes per second over 12 gigabytes per second sequential read and write. Right now, that is a relatively exclusive club. What do I mean by relatively? Well... Right now, there's only about seven drives in the world that can hit that performance number in this small scale uh, box here. Now, we've been able to hit those numbers before. You could use bloody great big performance cards if you wanted to. You can go with PCIe cards. They've got about eight M2 NVMe slots inside. If you chose to, you could go ahead and use bulky PCIe um, SSD and SAS SSD adapters to hit all of those with multiple drives. But I'm not talking about going with that big rigmarole. I'm talking about M2 NVMEs that are this big that are able to give you phenomenal performance. And in today's video, we're going to talk about what sets this drive apart from all the other ones out there. We're going to get it connected to our test machine and get some real world test results, not only in terms of those benchmarks, of course, synthetic, but on top of that, we're also going to be looking at what I believe to be one of the most pressing concerns of Gen 5 SSDs, temperature, because this drive makes a phenomenally bold claim about heat dissipation and a temperature when in operation, but more on that later on. So, we've already banged on about the uh, performance on this. This drive actually was revealed in some um, editorial platforms out there about six months ago. I'm sure at least one of them's on the screen. Um... This drive here, when it did arrive, a lot of users out there were kind of, how is it hitting that performance numbers? Uh, I've talked about this on the channel before, but the controller inside this, the Fizon E26 controller, has been around in the market now, by in the market, I mean in the consensus and the you know brain sphere of most of the industry, for about two to two and a half years. That controller has already been available in a number of, of Gen 5 SSDs in the market. We've got things like the A-Data Legend 970 there. We have got things like the Next Storage Drive here. There are Gen 5 SSDs in the market right now, all of which are providing 10 gigabytes per second thanks to that controller there inside. So why is it such a Johnny Big Bananas big deal that this drive with that exact same controller arriving at the start of 2024 is one, a better drive, two, hitting those extra performance numbers. How can two drives with the same controller hit this, a completely different performance numbers to such a wild degree? Well, it's down to the NAND. Both of them, if we look at these two drives, for example, these two drives here both use Micron NAND. They both use Micron B58R 3D TLC NAND flash inside where the data lives. They've both got DRAM, they've both got the same E26 controller, both of which benefit from the same updates from Fizon for that controller. However, this drive uses faster NAND. What do I mean by faster NAND? Well, because it takes advantage uh, of that 232 layer NAND Micron B58R modern iteration, which is the 2400 MTS or mega transfers per second performing NAND where the data lives or distributed around the um, SSD there. The result is it has more oomph that it can push down those available lanes. And the result is that this drive with that faster NAND in the right circumstances and the right data setup there can hit 14 over 12 when this drive with its NAND at 1600 MTS, which is still pretty darn good, which was the standard of the previous generation uh, of Gen 4, it can cap out at 9.5 to 10 gigabytes per second. We are still talking synthetic test benchmarks, but nevertheless, we are talking about that NAND being the reason where that controller has always had the ability to hit those numbers. It's just not been possible unless the NAND flash was driving that through the whole time. Durability rated at 0 0.38 um, means uh, dr uh, drive writes per day, means that this still matches the pretty much standard measurements 
of durability, both in um, terabytes written and drive writes per day of the Gen 4 generation uh, that's around at the moment. That's kind of now starting to become considerably more affordable as Gen 5 stretches its muscles out a little bit. But another thing I want to talk about with this drive, of course, is that heat dissipation I alluded to at the start of the video there. You can see what is a phenomenally bulky heat sink there. It's got the ventilation running all the way through it. I'm sure there are images here on screen. There's also an active cooling fan that directly connects to the um, technical um, four pin slot there of your MOBO. But this heat sink here is slightly different to some of the other ones you see in the field there. It's a, a Furore or Fraw Systems um, custom heatsink running through there. And you're going to hear that name a lot, by the way, in a lot of uh, Gen 5 SSDs. Because they're making big, big, bold promises that the, quote, air jet um, heatsink on this keeps the temperature cooler than most of the other contenders out there in a Fizon architecture. Now, I've looked online. And they seem to indicate that quite well. Obviously, we're going to be including temperature tests on this. When we do a lot of the crystal disk and particularly Atto benchmarks, we do tend to find that the Gen 5s we've tested up to this point, that is when they break into the late 60s, early 70s in terms of their performance and te uh, uh, temperature. When we look at the uh, heatsink there, for example, on that next storage Gen 5 uh, drive we mentioned there, this next storage Gen 5 drive, this doesn't use active cooling. What it uses is a two layer heat dissipation via a copper pipe there, distributing it over the two um, passive modules there, top and bottom. The result is that this drive is trying to use surface area to dissipate that enormous amount of heat that's being generated, whereas this doesn't really take advantage of that. It's still thinking more about spacing within inside the client hardware. This you know, God love it, when we were putting this in our test machine, we had to load this onto a separate PCIe card because it was already interfering with our P uh, with our CPU fan next to it there. But nevertheless, that is quite innovative, and I'm interested to see, one, if this can actually do what it says, but secondly, and more importantly to me at least, what does this mean afterwards? But thanks to Faison not only introducing that E26 all that time, but now at CES 2024, we're hearing a lot more formal mention of that other Gen 5 controller that they were working on there, the E31. The E31 or E31T is that DRAMless heat um, uh, uh, SSD controller that they were talking about, which, <clears throat> although I'm not a huge fan of DRAMless drives, again, look forward to talking about that towards the end of January. I will say that DRAMless SSDs, particularly a more compact kind of slim notebook and portable mobile SOC devices we're seeing on the market, there is a market for it. I'm not that target audience, but I know that there is. And I think more efficient heat sinks to dissipate the higher degree of temperature that's going to be raised by DRAMless SSDs is something that's going to require a lot more investigation and in R&D. So if this heat sink could be as good as they say in our testing, then that can be really positive. But I think I've banged on about this just a wee bit too much waving at you. Let's crack on over to the test machine and put this drive through its paces. Here on the desktop of my PC here, as alluded to earlier in the video, this was an SSD that was formally revealed in a certain number of ways early in 2023, although this is a document here from Fizon, so it was more of a back-end document that's now, as you can see from the URL, more widely available. Uh, two of the biggest sources, I would say, right now that revealed this SSD and its performance numbers last year were uh, Tom's Hardware, where they were talking more about the physical design at the tail end of 2023, uh, where they talked a lot more about it. That We've already kind of shown that off on camera. And then, of course, much earlier into 2023 was the Tweak Town test by, you know, John Coulter, Mr. SSD. I'll be frank with you, we've done so much um, on SSDs on this channel, which don't really hold a candle to this guy. But right now, looking at this, we've got the documentation there that allude to this drive. Some of the stuff we've already talked about earlier on, the NAND depth there, which we've kind of got confirmed since this documentation. And, of course, other stuff there, basically about the build quality of it. But even then, halfway through 2023, as you can see there, they did allude to that sequential read-write of 14 over close to 1200 or 11.8 uh, gigabytes per second there. Now, bringing it over to the desktop PC here with the drive inside. I'll say right now, I have conducted a bunch of tests. It's an unbranded drive there, as what we can see, I do have the fan uh, attached to this, to the fan connector on the MOBO, but straight away, look at that low temp. And even when we bring up the temperature there, 
that's pretty darn good. Boot, we're going to return to this chart later on once I show you the results of all of our testing. Or even better, I might just reduce it in scale there. Just to show you, we started off with a crystal disk testing here. So not the most extensive testing, but it's the easiest to read. Although, of course, all of these tests are rather synthetic. But if we have a look at those crystal disk tests, really early doors this SSD lived up to its rep. The initial testing there, uh, the drive cold turkey uh, at a one gig test file, which isn't really quite big enough for the SSD to stretch its muscles at this kind of performance threshold, was really the only test that didn't inhabit that space in terms of performance. Still 13.8 uh, uh, gigabytes of sequential read is still phenomenal. And 1.45 million uh, 4K random read IOPS is still pretty darn good and again because of the native gen 3 ssd that the os on this system is running on unfortunately that is something that is going to prove something problematic in terms of some of the performance unfortunately something we, we will look into for videos very very soon but the right performance there at 119 not great we have to say uh, i say not great let's be realistic that's still a phenomenal number of close to 12,000 megs but what i mean by not great is because of that one gig limitation there, it wasn't until we went to the larger test files at four gig, 16 gig, and even a 64 gig test, that in every single instance, this drive running on this PC, which we bring up the PC information here, you'll see is a Windows 12th gen i5 system, the 12600K, running with 16 gig of DDR5 memory, and not running with an external GPU card. This is all integrated graphics utilization and Windows 10, uh, 10 Pro, you can see there that it was still comfortably able to hit that 14 gigabytes per second in all three of those tests and hitting 12,000 uh, uh, megabytes per second, all that 12 gig in two of those tests. And again, getting alarmingly close with that enormous file there where normally you would associate that with the drop in overall saturation across that drive. And once again, as a reminder, there is that temperature reading there with these enormous ranging of tests there. Thanks to that onboard fan, this is a Gen 5 SSD that didn't crack 60, didn't go to 70, didn't hit the bottlenecks of 80 and 90, it did very well indeed. But, there's no avoiding that those are synthetic tests, as are the majority of the tests here. Once we moved over to Atto, slightly longer test regimen, we still saw phenomenal numbers. Now remember the calculation of megabytes versus gigabytes, but still nonetheless... 13.15 gigabytes per second still translates very well indeed and across the 256 megs or a quarter of a gig one gig and four gig test files we still saw phenomenal numbers beginning to end across this drive it really was not just the fastest drive we've ever had featured on the channel but more importantly the best sustained performance drive of gen 5 architecture we've ever had here on the channel and it's just phenomenal the kind of real gen 5 utilization here remember when gen 4 the first generation came out and everyone was talking about how the first gen of gen 4 that was in four to five thousand megs but people were waiting for that secondary gen to hit seven gig and higher we are now at that point in the gen 5s where we're getting a better saturation of gen 5 connectivity there and indeed if we open up ASSSD. The numbers, once again, with the way AS works, it's really not the same as that of the other benchmarks. It's a little bit more realistic, but it's still synthetic. And those numbers there were still in uh, under the uh, 10 gigabytes per second mark there. But again, they are relative scores there for AS SSD, something that, again, you have to read ever so slightly differently. But still, nonetheless, when we look at the IOPS numbers across these, and indeed, moving across them there, all of these will be broken down in an article in the description. Still very good, solid numbers for us to write home about there all the way through and through. Indeed, when we go for a more traditional benchmark there, so if we go, for example, into my downloads folder there, we're going to right click properties we've got 19.4 gigabytes uh, summarized over the course of uh, 189 files so varying sizes there across 12 folders we can go ahead copy those there and get those copied over to our drive paste those in oh we don't want to paste the shortcut absolute bell end move let's go ahead and copy those in and straight away that phenomenal speed there is being limited by our internal ssd unfortunately so even though we're writing to that drive this is still not going to be great for us which is a real shame because you can clearly see that bottleneck presenting itself there 
because it's just hitting the full capabilities of the internal SSD that this system is running for from there, unfortunately, which now, in hindsight, is clearly a SATA SSD. I apologize for that error. But still, nonetheless, we'll cancel that out there. These are still phenomenal numbers for this SSD for us to be talking about there. Indeed, normally by now, I would include an AJA test file. But the problem with testing AJA on this disk is simply that speed kind of breaks things. Obviously, there are limits right now because I'm using OBS as recording here in the background. But because we've not enabled anything like disk caching, which would you know undermine our results, unfortunately, AJA, this speed is just too high for this setup for this to give us a reasonable enough reading. Even if we ramp this up to a 5K red 64 gig file, we might get better numbers gradually, but this is still not going to be a reasonable test for what we are doing here. Now, I am going to be returning to the performance on this drive shortly uh, with a follow-up to this as we upgrade this test rig to a Gen 5 base system. But at the very least, when we look at those provisional results of the synthetic testing, we're still seeing phenomenal results there. Let's be realistic, of course I'm impressed with the way this drive performed. When we saw provisional prototype testing of this drive way back in summer 2023, it delivered the goods then, but of course that was a more prototype era there and it wasn't representative of a more final product, whereas this is pretty much what you're going to get if you buy one of these in the shops. And given that in the majority of our testing there, it did deliver on that 14 over 12 gig performance number, it is doing what it says on the tin, but I really wanted to zoom in there in terms of that temperature, because that temperature there, maxing at 44 degrees, given that was the heaviest load, that was a clear 20 to 25 degrees less than every other Gen 5 SSD I've looked at at similar test level, that is a phenomenal amount of heat dissipation this drive is capable of. And I can understand why they were being Johnny Big Bananas talking about it, because it does deliver on that. Now, pricing for this drive is still at that provisional stage, and there's a lot of MSRP being thrown around. Also, we can't ignore the fact that at CES 2024, this drive is being introduced alongside a number of other drives right now. So as good as it sounds, it's worth remembering that it is one of many drives being rolled out that are taking advantage of both the Fizon and the Micron combination of that newer high-performing NAND and a controller for the Gen 5 SSDs that has been tweaked upon tweaked upon tweaked upon tweaked. Now, if you were on the fence about buying a Gen 5 SSD, and one of the reasons you were on the fence about buying a Gen 5 SSD was because of you were waiting for the faster drives to arrive, well, ding dong, you're here. They've arrived. All we're going to see now in the next few years is increases at the 100 of megabytes or so as time wears on. The reason being that the maximum uh, bandwidth that you can break when it comes to Gen 5 SSDs like these at Gen 5 times 4 that these are allocated to there at the tip there. And again, NVMe 2.0 and all the other um, kind of architecture that is synonymous with drives like this. We've kind of not hit the ceiling, but we're kind of banging our head a little bit against it. And all you're going to hear now is occasionally every few months a drive boasting that it can hit another 50 or 100 megs. After this, the only innovations you're going to start to see within the next um, 12 to 18 months are going to be those of durability or those of power consumption as they make these heat sinks more and more compact or at least allow the onboard components to be that bit more efficient or higher NAND count. But if, again, performance is the reason you are holding out, you're here now. There is still the question mark regarding sustained performance and I think that's something that's going to be more of an issue on the client side than it will be on the SSD side but that's innovation that you can't control. And right now, if you were going to look at buying a new SSD, now is the time I'd say, do you know what? Gen 5's ready. It's ready to rock. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this. Learn more about this drive, hopefully, in the article in the description. But of course, this will be reported on other outlets online. Do check those out. But apart from that, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you later this week for more Gen 5 SSD coverage coming out of it, uh, CES 2024. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.